appreciate it. Right, back for round three. Um, so we've heard from, from two crypto businesses uh, today already about their out, outlook for, for the industry, for regulation. Now let's get in, in touch with, with the regulators, with the government uh, here. So I've got His Excellency Mohammed Al Sharafa, Chairman of the Abu Dhabi Department of Economic Development. So we can get a view here from how governments are thinking about the industry and how they might regulate it. So Mohammed, let's talk a, a bit about Abu Dhabi. Um, help us understand uh, what you're doing to support the development of, of crypto and the blockchain industry as well. Thank you for having me here uh, today. And um, well, from Abu Dhabi's point of view and United Arab Emirates as well, uh, mm -hmm. me being as the chairman of the Security Commodity Authority as well. So we actually regulate the crypto assets across the United Arab Emirates. And at the same time, we regulate the Abu Dhabi uh, local crypto assets and cryptocurrencies. Uh, well, Abu Dhabi have, uh, have been a pioneer within the crypto industry and the regulatory framework. Uh, obviously, Abu Dhabi Global Markets, which is the uh, financial free zone in Abu Dhabi for the last six to seven years, have developed, introduced, uh, and consulted with a lot of crypto uh, investors, crypto exchanges, to have the right framework and ecosystem for investors, for exchanges, and to attract more crypto development within the industry in Abu Dhabi. So, so can you give us some specific examples about some of the things you've done to, to sort of support the industry? Well, as you know, we've, uh, we've been uh, working with a lot of exchanges so far. The uh, crypto uh, industry in general is divided into two areas, the cryptocurrencies and crypto uh, assets. The cryptocurrencies in the United Arab Emirates is uh, regulated through the central bank, mm -hmm. and the crypto assets is uh, regulated through the Security and Commodity Authority. The, the uh, international free zones, financial free zones, they have their own regulatory framework. They have the common law, which is the UK law, yeah. and they have consultations with a lot of different industry experts and uh, players within the market. So, for example, we've been uh, working with uh, Kraken, Coinbase, uh, Binance, even with small investors and developers, so that we can have that ecosystem really working well for them, either from blockchain, from the custody side, from the technology side, so I think Abu Dhabi uh, so far have uh, attracted a lot of uh, players. And this is a testament to what Abu Dhabi have introduced to the market in the Middle East and North African region. So, so how are you thinking about regulation? Because you know we heard there Brett Harrison from FTX saying, well, we doesn't think it necessarily needs an overhaul of existing policy or a brand new framework, but perhaps some sort of additions to existing laws that are in place around already trading and other areas of the financial markets as well. So, so what's the approach fr from Abu Dhabi and, and UAE more broadly to, to regulation on that front? Well, I, I would agree with him. The concept is similar, but I think you need to have the right regulatory framework and for two simple reasons. First of all, it's a reputational risk, that's one. Two, you need to protect the investors and protect the exchanges and the companies that are developing those crypto assets and or tokenizations. So I think, yes, we need to have the regulatory framework proper it's still a long way to reach to where we need to be because it's a, it is a very fast developing industry. But at the same time, it has to be stringent. It has to be clear and transparent so that everybody gets the feeling of transparency and the interest to give more interest within this industry. When I speak to you know, the exchanges and other, other businesses uh, in the industry, you know, their biggest pain point about regulators globally is lack of clarity. They say, we don't know what we can, what we can't do, what's a gray area, what's, what's against the law. And so that, that's a huge pain point. Uh, as you speak to these businesses, what else are they saying about other things that they feel that the regulators haven't got right and that you're trying to, to fix? Well, I think we look at it from uh, uh, the interest of the investors first. Any exchange needs investors. And for investors to continue investing within the currency or the asset, they need to have a proper framework. And this framework, if it is not clear, they will lose money. They won't be uh, encouraged to invest more. But at the same time, it's important to have a clear ecosystem of all the players around you, from the regulatory, from the law, from the local law, from international, uh, either from uh, tokenizations. Uh, there's a lot of these that are still vague to a lot of regulators as well. But as far as we are concerned as Abu Dhabi, we feel we are on the right track. We feel we are consulting a lot of the private players as well, and we're consulting a lot of other regulators because we want to have the best 
breed system and regulatory framework for everybody to uh, shine in Abu Dhabi. How does the, the recent market crash feed into your thinking? Because now you all of a sudden have to think about consumer protection. Uh, you know, some of these coins, 60, 70 percent, some of them have gone to zero in the, in the recent market crash. So how does that feed into, into what you're thinking? Well, we, we do not approve anything. I think that's, that's the first thing or the first line of defense that you need to have. And you need to understand how this technology is being developed, how these assets or currencies are tokenized, and how are they being uh, marketed to the people. So does it have any assets, asset base? Is it be, being uh, properly developed? And that's why Abu Dhabi being stringent is, uh, is putting Abu Dhabi at a reputation uh, that everybody wants to be licensed by Abu Dhabi Global Markets. And now they can also be licensed onshore through the Security Commodity Authority. And I, I just want to say some, something else. Now, Dubai, for example, are also, they have the Virtual Asset Regulatory uh, uh, Unit mm. that also works hand in hand with the Security Commodity Authority. So there is that over -ed, overhanging regulator plus the international uh, financial free zones also available playing a big role in developing that uh, ecosystem. Do, do you think regulators like yourself need to take closer looks at specific coins? Because I was asking, uh, you know, a Brett there about, you know, exchanges uh, need to do more due diligence to some extent on the coins they're listing. Um, should, should that be the regulator's job as well? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, the regulators there is to protect the investors. And we need to do the proper due diligence to find out if these are real uh, assets that are being traded or no. And I think this is a core uh, business for the regulator. And that's why the regulators need to be stringent as well. Mm. You cannot just keep it as open-ended. Some regulators, they have that open-ended uh, mentality just to attract and get the business. But on the long term, I don't think that's, that's the proper uh, ecosystem to develop. So is that something that's currently in place in Abu Dhabi or, or being developed further? Yeah, and in Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi Global Markets have really done a great job into that, having a, a very strong team and technologists that actually look into these uh, uh, diligently. And, uh, and that's why we've been uh, refusing a lot of exchanges and assets to be uh, listed or domiciled within the Abu Dhabi global markets uh, uh, framework. Let's talk about stable coins uh, uh, as well, because that, of course, is a very hot topic right now, but also something that global regulators have raised alarms about, given what we saw with the UST uh, issues recently and the collapse of that and, and the shockwaves it sent effectively through the market as well. Um, you know, as a government, how are you thinking about stable coins? How are you thinking about regulating these stable coins? Well, Let's take two steps back first. I think uh, looking at crypto in general, it's bound to happen, it's bound to happen. Mm. Uh, um, USTs, uh, tokenizations, currencies, assets, all of that, it's gonna come, it's gonna come. So we have to have an, uh, an open mind that how we're gonna regulate it, yes, markets go up and down. That's, that's, the, that's people, how, how exchanges work. And if market, markets or currencies don't go up and down, people don't make money or they actually lose money. So at the same time, we have to look at a different perspective of how to regulate these. If we cannot really regulate it, are they asset-based or they're not asset-based? Are they real or not real? Because you see a lot of Ponzi schemes uh, within uh, this industry now, and that's why you have to be very stringent at the beginning. So, so I'll, I'll, let's take, a, let's take a, an example, right? Uh, you got USDT. Now, they, of course, release a report, USDC as well, also re release a report uh, saying that we've, we've had our, our uh, auditing done, these are the assets they hold, but yet there's still uh, need or, or there's still a lot of calls for greater transparency. You know, there's concerns over, well, exactly who is regulating uh, or auditing these companies, what exact assets are they holding? Yes, it's, it's, it's a uh, commercial bond of some sort but who's from what country, what company, what's the rating? So, you know, as you look at, at these coins, particularly USDT, USDC, um, do you think there should be greater transparency on, on what they're claiming to be in their reserves? Absolutely, you have to find out what's the asset base of those uh, uh, currencies coming from. So how do you go about that then? What well, you have to just do a proper due diligence, dig deep into the, the numbers and the details of uh, those uh, assets. Because at the end of the day, what are you trying to do? You're trying to protect the investors. Mm -hmm. And if an exchange or a regulator cannot protect their inter the interests of the investors, why the regulator is there? And that's why you have to be 
Sometimes you'll make people uh, angry, but again, it is for the interest of that ecosystem that we want to develop in Abu Dhabi. So would you go so far as to say, well, look, these, we have to audit it. The regulators have to audit it, not, not your third party uh, you know, auditors that you have. We have to have a look. Is that yeah, something we, you're considering? Yeah, there is, that, that this is something that we are doing and considering to do furthermore, because you could outsource these to third parties mm -hmm. that you could uh, approve. But again, you need to have the right people. Obviously, the regulator doesn't have all the uh, uh, aspects of the regulating these uh, uh, currencies or assets. Yeah. And that's why you have to depend on third parties. But those third parties have to be vetted, have to be approved by the regulator so that you can move faster and get all these due diligence in place. Uh, let's switch topic and talk a little bit about central bank digital currencies as well. Again, it's, it's a, uh, another topic many central banks around the world are looking at. How's the UAE thinking about it at this point? Well, that's why when we, as, as United Arab Emirates uh, concerned, we've, we've divided the crypto into two. The central bank is actually uh, regulating the uh, crypto uh, currencies. And uh, we are going to issue a new regulatory framework for uh, cryptocurrencies in the next uh, couple of months. And we've been working hand in hand with a lot of different regulators as well that have pioneered uh, United Arab Emirates within the cryptocurrency. Uh, but we're also working also with our international financial free zones because they've been there for the last seven years and six years uh, introducing and regulating uh, cryptocurrencies. So we believe it is an important uh, uh, sector that needs to be uh, regulated and it is going to add to the GDP of the United Arab Emirates as well. Mm. In terms of a central bank issued digital dirham, uh, something like that, is, is that in, in, the, in the discussions at this point, is there a time frame for that? Well, a time frame, not yet, but uh, I think it was public as well that uh, United Arab Emirates is looking at uh, issuing uh, a cryptocurrency in dirhams, mm -hmm. uh, our local currency. Uh, but it is something that needs to be done because we believe it's, it's the next thing that's coming. And you need also to regulate that even more harder than the asset, uh, crypto yeah. assets. Well, what are some of the benefits then of, of, of such, a, such a currency? Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think uh, putting Abu Dhabi and, that, and United Arab Emirates uh, specifically on, on the market, and I think it's going to attract more uh, developers and more exchanges to come to this part of the world to make use of this uh, currency. And as you know, with uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, recently our GDP have uh, increased by about 6% in 2021. And I think, I think this also gives it a different flavor that the uh, United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi and Dubai are playing a big role within the cryptocurrency and crypto asset uh, space. Mm. Uh, you, you've probably been watching with great interest what's happening in El Salvador, mm -hmm. uh, just, just as an experiment, I guess. Uh, the fact that they introduced Bitcoin as, as legal tender. Um, do you think that's something that the, the UAE would, would ever consider doing or, or is that just one step too far? <laughs> I think it's one step too far. I think we need to get the regulation right first. Uh, you cannot just go into uncharted waters without having the right uh, framework in place. And not only the framework, but you need to have the right players as well uh, in place. Mm. So I think having the regulation first, get the right uh, uh, stakeholders with you as well, is very important to push that uh, sector into a, a different level where it is now. But do you think it makes sense to have in, uh, in the UAE something like Bitcoin running alongside a digital dirham or, or even just the fiat, Well, I think you know? this is more of a sovereign, uh, sovereign issue, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's something that we don't close the door on. So uh, we're always uh, looking at opportunities that uh, would help United Arab Emirates and Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely that's an area that we'll be very happy to look at and continue looking at the development that's happening very quickly. Mm. Uh, what about NFTs then uh, as well, Mohammed? Because this is something that, uh, again, it's a, a market that very clearly went into a bubble very quickly. These digital collectibles going for, for millions and millions of dollars. The prices have come down dramatically as well. Um, but is NFTs and uh, a market that you feel has a future or is this just sort of a fad? Well, from a regulator point of view, um, it's a product. Mm. Uh, products come and go. And uh, NFT has been uh, uh, booming for some time. And as you said, it just uh, went away. Uh, people made money, people lost money. Yeah. But uh, again, that's, that's market. You have to do your proper due diligence. Uh, again, supply and demand. Uh, regulation is there. But again, it is how much people are uh, demanding these assets. How you regulate it is a completely different uh, ball game. But I think uh, it is something that will continue, but to stabilize rather than 
uh, what we've seen in the last uh, six to eight months. Yeah. Uh, has, has the, have you bought the NFTs under the regulatory purview? Did you need to do something different? Well, we started doing that, and I think we're looking at a completely different framework for NFTs. Okay. Uh, and uh, um, uh, Abu Dhabi and United Arab Emirates and Dubai, to be honest with you, have been uh, very strong into that area. Yeah. Uh, people made money there. Uh, people lost money, as I said. But we need to have the right framework. We're looking at it very seriously, uh, to be honest. Mm. Um, you, you've managed to attract a lot of quite high-profile businesses to, to, to Abu Dhabi, to, to the UAE more broadly as well, when it comes to the crypto industry as well. So uh, as, you, as you look over the next kind of year or two, um, are there other companies you're, you're speaking to at the moment to bring over? Well, this, what you said tells you a lot about UAE and Abu Dhabi. Is, uh, why, why are they coming to this regulatory uh, framework? It's because the regulation is actually important for them, important for their customers and investors. And, uh, and yes, we are actually talking to a lot of other uh, uh, companies. And a lot of those companies are actually coming and saying to us, we want to be with you now. And we tell them, listen, this is your playbook. This is what you need to uh, work on. And we, and we handhold them till the end of licensing their, uh, their uh, exchanges or their uh, assets. You, and, sorry, go ahead. And, and, and this is, I think, very important as well from a regulator that you need to move with them every step uh, that they take so that they have the right framework in place. Are you able to give me some names? Well, uh, publicly, as you know, yeah, Binance is there, uh, FTX uh, is coming, uh, Coinbase, yeah. uh, Kraken has been announced, and there are more uh, coming as well. But these are the big ones. Mm. You need to have a lot of other players that those exchanges need, and those that what we are uh, concentrating on now. Mm. What do you think are some of the, the issues with, with other major regulators around the world right now? Because we've seen, you know, in the US, in the UK, uh, in parts of Europe as well, they're talking about regulation, but there's not much, much action, nor is there much concrete framework being put forward. What, why, why is that? I think it's the will. I think the will and how agile uh, and quick you can be in, in developing that regulations. Crypto is very fast. Things are changing day by day. And that's why you have to be very fast in putting the right framework and being able to adapt to the changes and, and have the regulation ready for those changes as well. And that's, I think, where we as United Arab Emirates and Abu Dhabi are, are bringing this to the table to uh, the crypto uh, space. Mm. So, so what's the focus now for, for Abu Dhabi and the UAE the next one, two years? What are your, your top priorities? Well, I think, uh, again, innovation and knowledge uh, economy is, is, uh, is always on the top of our, uh, our list. I think uh, Abu Dhabi specifically have uh, had a 4.5% GDP growth even with the uh, oil prices at the beginning of 2021. Uh, with the current oil prices also, I think this year will be a great year for us, but our leadership is trying to reduce the dependency on oil from our GDP. So we want to increase our non-oil GDP uh, more than 60% uh, now. We are above 50% uh, in the non-oil GDP. And I think uh, more of uh, investing and developing uh, new uh, economies like the agriculture technology, financial technologies as well. And uh, obviously one of the most important uh, sectors to us is uh, attracting more investors and talents to this part of the world. Great. Uh, it, was, it was wonderful catching up with you again after so long. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much in, for your insight into the views from the government, thank from you. regulators. Uh, and clearly, as you mentioned, very fast moving. So we'll keep an eye on what goes on next. A round of applause for our wonderful guest, His Excellency Mohammed Ali Al Sharafa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.